The Indie Stone's origin story is actually one of humble beginnings, just a couple of dudes looking to escape the grindstone of the mainstream gaming industry. So the Indie Stone was formed, and their initial escape was that to one of After Hours' creative musing in the modding scene, modding for titles such as Oh, uh, they being Chris Simpson and Andy Hodgetts, by the way. And then there's Marina Su Chong, who came to the picture a little later on down the road, chatting up with Chris and Andy on a game dev forum. Well, one thing led to another, and next thing you know, the three began working on their first full independent game. Pause. But life and all of its strange inner workings decided that now wasn't the right time. And pause was put on... Pause. Well, not without good reasoning, however. As the team had a higher calling co-developing with Zombie Cow, now size 5 games, making an educational, uh, uh well. Oh, hey, look. The massive... Which surprisingly went on to earn a BAFTA. This isn't space or chainsaws. It's vaginas and bottoms and places like that. There was a lot of very accurate research that went into it. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, and after that, we ended up at the next Biffo tip, which is, <laughs> don't end up penniless. What was the situation post-private? Because Privates was uh, a free educational game, obviously there wasn't any money to be made post the game coming out. And uh, while it was a massively worthwhile experience working on it, at the end of it, we suddenly realised that we had no money to pay the rent. Yeah, we were literally on bread and beans for yeah. weeks. And that was all we could afford. We had no money for rent, and it was just beans. But armed with new knowledge, willpower, and a belly full of beans, the Indie Stone began work on their next title. Kind of. You see, the whole capital issue was really putting a big damper on their whole game dev thing. And their next idea was a little too big of a bite for such a small poor team. So what do, said a little team with big dreams, and in swooped a hero. One of a little infamy in uh, the present-ish day, but of much grandeur in the past. His name was Notch. Well, not him personally, just his ideas and alpha for at least initially. So with hearts full of hope, some photos, and a mission statement, the Indie Stone took to the internet seeking crowdfunding, which actually garnered quite a bit of attention in the beginning. The Indie Stone began receiving their funding, enabling bill paying and food choices beyond beans. While all was a little chaotic in the beginning, things were looking up. But as soon as life seemed to be turning a corner for the Indie Stone, so too did their luck. Don't blindly trust that PayPal loves you. drunk thing celebrating the move to a flat in the middle of Newcastle and someone we presume another tenant in the same building and had proceeded to kick through the fire door and uh, steal credit cards and laptops the game hadn't been backed up online in two months instead had been backed up between the two laptops reading from discovery the internet was informed via Twitter and the internet's eye of Sauron needled in us and we became enemy number one and someone on reddit and elsewhere we were fraudsters criminals and in the chaos we all bit back uh, but then it turned out that the, the internet really can bite back harder. As you can see, the Indie Stone didn't arrive here on a fluke or luck. When times were tough, they did what needed to be done and powered through. They maintained transparency with their community throughout the majority of the development cycle, almost to a fault. Now, they have made some controversial decisions in the past, but it's my opinion that they were the necessary hard decisions but the overall right ones for Project Zomboid. Decisions such as to remove NPCs and set further development on the back burner. Now regardless, at any point during those long nine years, filled with woes, backlash, hardship, and just the even overall stagnation, the Indie Stone could have cut and run. I believe many others would have. Instead, they're still here, plugging away at their passion project. They embody values and morals I expect from a developer. 
and I truly see a great future for both them and Project Zomboid. Now, hopefully I've swayed you into taking a small $20 gamble and giving them a go. In the meantime, I think I'm going to take a break. Maybe play some more PZ. Who knows, maybe I'll cover some uh, neat things that you can do in PZ. Project Zomboid. But if you happen to have an insatiable hunger for more PZ vids right now, then munch on some content from some of these amazing creators that cover Project Zomboid. And is your appetite a little bit more refined? Then go ahead and check out here. We have some other recommendations for you.